Why is it that so many people love the mountain meditation? What is the mountain meditation anyway? And is it really a form of mindfulness if you're doing visual imagery? That's what we're going to be exploring plus more today in today's episode from the Teach Mindfulness podcast. My name is Shamash. So the mountain meditation I found, interestingly, is a favorite for many people. And for any of you that don't know what the mountain meditation is, it simply involves uh, a guided exercise, usually takes 15, 20 minutes, where you describe a beautiful mountain, uh, and you may even describe the weather and the landscape around it. And then you ask the person to embody the mountain. So they're sitting in, in the qualities of the mountain and they're observing the, the landscape around them. And it's almost like a metaphor. So that's just a quick version of what the mountain meditation is. And I think it's a favorite for a lot of people because most people, not everyone, but maybe about 80% of people quite like imagery and they can engage in imagery and visualization quite easily and so something like being mindfulness of breathing or being mindful of our bodies for quite a lot of people it's difficult it seems almost a bit abstract and the sensations may not be strong enough something like a mountain some people can really engage and really visualize it and feel and feel the kind of the peace of being there now, when, when is that particularly helpful? And I would say the mountain meditation is particularly helpful when you want to help someone to feel grounded. Obviously, a mountain is huge and it's obviously connected to the ground, but there's this sense of it being so strong and so heavy, it's fixed to the ground. So it's got this sense of stability and rootedness to it. And so you can use the mountain meditation to help people to feel grounded and stable, especially when they're going through a lot of changes in their life when there's lots of emotions there and lots of thoughts that are whirling around their heads and they need a sense of stability it's absolutely brilliant for that some ways to kind of make it to kind of enhance the experience i would say is just like we have our outer five senses i like to think we have our inner five senses and so you can go through those inner five senses when you describe the uh, experience of being by a mountain they can first of all ask people to think about uh, a mountain they've been to before or one they make up in their imagination. So give them the choice and then go through what would it look like? What would the sounds be like? Maybe even the scent in the air in nature. And what would it feel like? That's almost like the physical touch of being by a mountain. So going through each of the five inner senses can help to deepen the experience and help them to engage. Remember to say, because if there are some people for whom it's difficult or almost impossible to do visual imagery, and for that group of people, remember just to say they, it may not be so vivid for them when they uh, try to engage with this uh, meditation, and that's okay. It doesn't need to be perfectly focused for you to benefit from the meditation, even if there's a, a vague sense of seeing a mountain there, that's fine. And that can help put their minds at ease. Uh, so that's one way. The other thing uh, about guiding the mountain meditation is go through the changes that are happening around the mountain. So talk about the changes that go from day to night and how the light changes, the temperature changes, uh, different animals may come and go. And then talk about the change of the seasons and how as the seasons change, the temperature changes. And then in particular, talk about the weather that's changing and how the, the mountain is still. And that's the power of the metaphor, the change that surrounds the mountain and yet the stillness and the groundedness of the mountain itself. And it's that contrast between the two that you want to share in that guided practice. So then when your students are engaging in the mountain meditation, they 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 can notice the changing thoughts, changing feelings, changing sensations around them. But yet there is something still and grounded and present and something that they can connect to within themselves that they can feel centered in. And I would say, you know, for me, I like to link that up to our sense of awareness or consciousness, the observing self, which links beautifully to our earlier uh, talk that I gave in a previous podcast about the observing self and the transcendent self. 
as that is one of the key one of the four key elements of mindfulness being able to have this perspective taking observing self perspective within ourselves finally just to finish i want to share that the mountain meditation doesn't have to take 15 or 20 minutes like these other ones it can be done in a few minutes or in a minute and i have had some students where they just recall the image of the mountain or look at a picture of a mountain and it helps them to remind them to be centered and grounded so it doesn't have to be a long practice and remind your students you can start nice and simply with a short practice so to summarize uh, it's a great practice for cultivating groundedness and stability it's a visual imagery exercise which is quite easy for many even though it's imagery you're kind of connecting with your inner senses and you can connect with people's breathing and their bodily sensations you can get them to adopt the posture of a mountain so it's got the mindful elements there it's something that john kabat-zinn who founded uh, the mbsr course included in his uh, courses too and uh, and it's all about creating this contrast of the surrounding mountain with all the changes that are around it and the stillness of the mountain itself and that se that sense of being directly connected to the earth Thanks so much for listening. Uh, it's the Binder Teach Mindfulness Podcast. And tomorrow in our next episode, I'm going to be talking about the lake meditation, another imagery exercise. And we'll explore um, the pros and cons of that and some of the ways to guide that effectively. Thanks so much for listening. Do like and share it or subscribe if you want to keep up. And uh, do feel if you uh, get to get in touch if you want to learn to teach mindfulness or you want to join a mindful teacher community that we're just starting up right now. All right, thanks.